Hello everyone! It's World Book Day, not just any World Book Day though, it is the 25th anniversary of World Book Day and we have got an amazing lineup for you today, hosted by the magical world of Mushroom Marvellous. So please do, whenever you see any of our authors come on here today, we've got 10 amazing children's authors that are coming on. We've also got people who are have businesses with publishing, have businesses with proofreading, have lots of other businesses and lots of plate spinning. But the whole purpose of today is to get our stories out there. Okay, and I'm going to kick off today with my story and my book. So my name's Kylie Dixon and I am the author and illustrator and creator of The Magical World of Mushroom Marvellous. When you come on, please say hello, ask any questions. I am going to be reading some of my second book today which is in cap and the blight of the bonnets okay now why am i obsessed with mushrooms i am going to quickly tell you this okay so two and a half years ago when i left me my job in the bank i worked for a bank for 18 years i decided morning everyone who's coming on thank you for sharing and supporting it's amazing um, I decided that um, I wanted to do something with my artwork and I didn't know what um, and I wanted it to be unique. This is the story that I tell children as well when I go into schools because this is a true story. And um, I was walking out and about in the forest over in my little town called Seam in the northeast of England and um, I spotted hundreds of mushrooms on the floor and I was like, whoa, that is I've never seen so many mushrooms before, so I started Googling it, as you do, getting your phone out, giving it a gook. And I found out that spotting mushrooms, and all my fans will know this, um, I, spot, I found out that spotting mushrooms in the wild in Old English folklore is a symbol of positivity and new beginnings. And it was a sign for me from that day that I realised that mushrooms was going to be a symbol for me. <laughs> and so... Lots of things happened. Um, if you follow me in my secret world of Mushroom Marvellous, you'll have been on this journey with us. I talk about it all the time. But I created a little world of mushroom characters. Hello, everyone who's coming and commenting. Thank you so much. This is so, so supportive. Thank you. So let's have a look at some of the characters. I'm going to show you some illustrations as well. I'm not just going to be reading my favourite chapter. I am going to be showing you the illustrations because there's a reason why this is my favourite chapter and I'll explain that to you as well. Now I did touch on there about schools, um, but I'm going to show you some of the characters first. Okay, so this is in cap. All of my characters have been inspired by actual mushrooms. So this is in cap and these are my illustrations and what I love about this whole development shall we say as an author is I didn't know I could illustrate I really didn't know I knew I could I could I was an artist and I did really abstract pieces of artwork but I didn't know I could illustrate and this has pushed us into a direction that I'm now illustrating for a living I'm writing books and I'm illustrating for a living so some of the some of the um authors who are coming on today I want you to spot who I'm illustrating for amazing morning jackie morning alexa and alexa one and alexa two so this is in cap he is the hero of the magical world of mushroom marvelous and he travels through the allotment it's all set in my dad's allotment right it's an actual physical space in sam and um in cap and his pals, who I'm going to show you, travel through the allotment and they help the vegetables and the plants to survive because there is a baddie. Morning, Steve. Happy birthday, Steve. This is Nixus. He is inspired and created from a thistle. Nixus is the baddie and he has an army of nethers in book one who start attacking the Peapod Patch. And in cap, and his friends and the characters that he meets have to go through the allotment and find out how to defeat General Nixus. <clears throat> this is Gillow, and he is one of the Bonnet children who appears in book two. And everybody 
give us some love hearts when you see who's next because everybody falls in love with scales scales is a little bumbling mushroom he, he tends to, to fall over quite a lot he's a little bit clumsy and there he is there in a muddy puddle thanks leanne hi sarah ball and then you have this is bonnet bonnet she is the female character who makes an appearance in in cap and the blight of the bonnets book two she's a right sass pot i thought it was important to bring a real strong female character in the book two there she is amazing you've got the bullets here and this is a particular scene that I like where Incap is climbing up towards Bonnet's house. And lastly, I'm going to quickly show you and then I'm going to get on to reading my book is Wispin. Wispin, the wise old worm. Wispin is a very key character in the magical world of Mushroom Marvis. He lives in the Bug Den, which is actually in my dad's allotment. And he is the keeper of secrets. And what happens throughout the story and throughout the entire series, I've got five books in my head. I'm writing book three now. Book three is In Cap and the Agaric Circle. These are fly agarics, right? So think about that. Um, and what happens throughout the story is the each of the mushrooms receive a power or a potence is what we call it in the magical world of mushroom marvelous and they don't know when it's going to happen but when it happens it's in a real like poignant moment where they realize that it can help in some way okay right i'm just going to quickly read you your comments and then i'll get cracking with the story my favorite chapter hello nicola oh Stephen says i absolutely love reading whispering i love listening to you reading it right thank you everyone okay the reason i'm reading this chapter is right and i mentioned earlier about going into schools so i go into schools now and i talk to them about how i was inspired when i was about nine year old i read the lion the witch and the wardrobe and it completely changed my the way that our my imagination worked right and i was all i've always been created creative and I keep saying to them, it's not just about your teachers and your family saying, you need to read more, you need to read more. If I hadn't read that book, I don't think I'd be doing this today. And I tell this to the children. And it's because I totally believe that reading sparks something in your imagination that you just enter a new world, you enter new worlds. And the whole part of the line, the witch in the wardrobe, what I loved, my favourite scene is when they go into the beaver's house right mr and mrs beaver and i could just imagine all the things that were in there so it was important for me when i started writing so book one was all about setting up the characters getting used to meet everyone the whole allotment space book two you go further into their houses you go in and i describe particular scenes and the inspirations totally come from the line the witch in the wardrobe all right so here we go I've <clears throat> got my um, illustrations ready. So I'm not starting from the beginning. What's happened is one of the chil the bonnet children has come and knocked and looked for Incap as they need some help because their sister is feeling a little unwell. He gave advice to Incap and Scales, he did. Okay. Chapter 5 the bonnet family at the bottom edge of the allotment right next to the outer fence there is a pile of fallen branches the grump is often to be seen carrying these branches as he clears the ground around the old oak tree that leans over the allotment fence back he goes throughout the season taking some of the more rotten wood to the compost heap Incap is often amazed how one little branch nestled under the hedge is always left behind. He can never work it out. It's as if the grump knows about their secret world and is somehow protecting it, just like the mushrooms protect his garden. The grump, by the way, is me dad. 
and he doesn't know that the mushrooms are there. This decaying branch is where the Bonnet family live. It's known by the mushrooms as the tuft. The tuft is home to many other mushroom families too. If you look closely enough, you can see weeny windows of light and colour amongst doors of all shapes and sizes. There are higgledy-piggledy chimneys piping out smoke and steam from the welcoming warmth within. Yes, a bustling little network of mushy homes, all connected within the wood. It may not sound very homely, but old rotten wood, rich in nutrients and moisture, is the perfect spot for mushrooms to live. Bonnet was an angel bonnet mushroom. She was delicate and beautiful with a dainty, light, olive green body. Her cap, there she is with her family. Her cap was one of the most exquisite caps to be seen in the magical world of Mushroom Marvellous. It was bell shaped and flowing with elegant pleats. And like Gillows and her other two children, it was almost see through. Gillow Brushen and Bella, two brothers and one sister, all lived with their mother, Bonnet, in their house in the Tuft. Scales loved visiting the Tuft. There was something so comforting about its constant buzz of activity. He would imagine the families all sitting together, stories being told on cold, dark nights, just like tonight or this morning. <laughs> But as Scales, Incap and Gillow reached the tuft on this particular night, they were anxious about what they would find. It wasn't that far from Incap's house, but in the chilly, damp weather of autumn, it seemed as though the three little mushrooms were walking forever. There wasn't much talk between them. A mixture of tiredness and uncertainty made them quiet and thoughtful. Scales attempted to bring up the subject of Incap's dream. Incap simply said, not now, we have more important things to worry about. He's been having a strange dream. Scales was rather put out by his friend's response. He'd been meaning to ask about this recurring dream for a few days now. I'll get to the bottom of it, he thought to himself. It may not be right now, but I will find out what's disturbing your sleep. Bonnet's house was at the top of the tuft. You could tell which of the hundreds of hidden houses was hers as the roof was covered in green mossy spirals. A delicate autumn fern leaf arched over the moss swirls. It acted like an umbrella against the raindrops. Incap, Scales and Gillow arrived after clambering up the splintered damp wood. It was still dark in the allotment and Scales was mindful where he placed his clumsy pudding feet. The tufts wood was still soft in places from the rainy season. Gillow was first through the little wooden archway leading into the main room of the Bonnet family home. Incap had to duck down a little under the arch to stop his hat from knocking against it. Scales followed behind, puffing and panting. The room glowed with a flickering fire, a tiny flame that burned in the centre of the room in a hall filled with dried moss. It was the sullen looking shadows on the walls that Incap in cap notice first, Bonnet hunched over with another little mushroom silhouette close at her side. Gillow ran to his family and put his arm around his brother. They were so alike, Gillow and Brushen. It was almost impossible to tell them apart. In fact, the only difference between them was the faint brown dots speckled down Brushen's front. Brushen often had to stop other mushies from talking to his tummy as they tried to spot them. Look, he came, Gillow pointed in the direction of the doorway. Incap has come to help us. And Scales, Incap added, stepping forward into the room. Gillow's told us of this fever, Bonnet. What's happened? Let me take a look. Bonnet stood tall and stepped back. She had been carefully wetting the top of Bella's cap and around her face with the edge of her own beautiful glistening bell-shaped cap. Oh, Incap, she said. She shook her head and let the tall grey mushroom through to see. Poor thing came home from polytunnel tasks this afternoon and we just thought she was tired from working. Incap stepped close at the sleepy Bella, lying near the fire's edge. She laid out the rest and after a few hours she started to complain of a fever, Bonnet went on. 
Her brothers were tired too, but were fine after a rest and some salt cup. The two yellow-bellied brothers nodded in unison. Inca placed his hand on Bella's brow. Her skin, which was a lightly coloured green than her mother's, was hot to the touch. Bella, he said, taking his hand away. It's Inca. Can you hear me? He spoke very softly so as not to startle her. Bella's little chest puffed up and down and she rolled onto her side, letting out a gasp. Bella, Inca tried again. Tell me how you feel, little one. Can you open your eyes? They all waited patiently as Bella slowly opened one of them. When she recognised who was kneeling beside her, she managed to open her other eye. Hot, she whispered. So hot. Shh, now, said Inca. Then if it's hot you feel, we'll do everything we can to keep you cool. Inca turned to the two brothers who watched on worriedly. Gillo still had his arm around brushing. We need to move her away from the fire and we need as much water as we can find, Incap said. It'll be morning in a few hours. Make sure you collect the dew at first light and have it here ready to cool her skin as the fever burns. Keep her cool and moist. That's very important. Do you understand? They nodded in agreement. And Skills, open that window. In fact, open them all. Bella needs as much cold air as she can get. And there's Skills opening the window. As Incap and Bella's two brothers moved her to a cooler spot, Skills hurried round the room. He rolled up the square patches of material that covered each of the five windows hidden in the nooks and crannies of the wall. Instantly, a breeze of fresh air entered and danced around the room. With the rush of cold, Bella's tiny body seemed to relax. She curled herself and tucked her knees up and her breathing settled. Thank you, Bonnet said letting out a sigh of relief. That's the most comfortable she's been since this afternoon. No need for thank yous, Bonnet, Incap answered. Then he turned his head towards her so the others wouldn't see the worried look on his face. In a lower voice, he went on. She isn't quite out of the woods yet. And he reached for Bonnet's hand. She's more comfortable, yes, but she must stay that way to keep the fever at bay. He squeezed her hand and gave a nod before turning back towards the room. Remember, as much dew as you can find at first light, he instructed the brothers again. He instructed the brothers again. Got it? Yes, they both said at once. We'll come back in the morning and check how Bella's getting on, Incap said to Scales. There's nothing more we can do now but wait until she rides the fever out. Incap let go of Bonnet's hand and walked towards the doorway. He was so confused. Never had he overworked the little mushrooms of the garden so much that they'd caught fever. He couldn't help wondering if this was all his fault. Yes, it had been an extremely rainy week, but he knew how much he could push them on with their tasks. He'd been so careful to keep the smallest of the mushrooms inside, protected from the harsh weather. As Scales joined him at the entrance, Incap turned to Bonnet and said, I'm so sorry. I'll do whatever I can to help Bella. I will make this better. And with that, he and Scales went off into the night. They left the bonnets in the flickering firelight, willing first life to hurry up and disappear. I'm going to do another chapter for you. It's not a long one. Chapter 6, The Widow's Watch. Dawn would break in a couple of hours. The two mushrooms knew they had a worrying day ahead of them. Incap and Scales made their way across the garden, ducking under lettuce leaves and hobbling over gravel paths. Should have turned the page. <laughs> Scales couldn't help noticing the beauty of the moonlight as it twinkled across newly formed dewdrops. Even so, the little brown mushroom was afraid of the dark. There was no way on earth he would be out and about in the allotment at this time of night if he wasn't with Incap, his brave best friend. Scales, Incap interrupted his thoughts. You know we have to do something to help Bella. I'm not sure I could live with myself if anything happened to her. Scales gave a light tug on Incap's cape. But this isn't your fault. I know you think it is because of the afternoon's work in the tunnel. But surely, if anyone was going to be so worn out from the ferrying about, it'd be me. Hello everyone who's joining, I'm nearly done. Share it please. Incap turned and looked down at Scales' friendly little face. I know you don't believe it, he said, but you are much stronger than the younger ones in the garden. I would never give any task to anyone I didn't think was right for the job. 
Inca paused, then continued with a glum look. This is why I'm so puzzled by it all, because I don't understand it. But maybe I have worked little Bella far too hard. His face became even sadder. His shoulders heaved from his sigh. It was the first time Scales had seen his friend so gloomy. He didn't know what to say to make him feel better. It really was a mystery why Bella was so ill. And if Incap, the clever bald mushroom, couldn't work it out, then all it could do was hope. Walking a few paces behind, Scales tried to focus on the magical silhouettes of the plants and vegetables in the night. He imagined the long carrot greens bowing down and taking the hands of the little radish shoots, dancing and laughing as if they hadn't a care in the world. He noticed the golden onion heads pointed and proud peeping out from their soil beds like rockets waiting to launch into the night sky. Hello, Mark Ryer. You'll be up next. Thump! Scales' dreaming was brought to an abrupt end. Incap had halted right in his tracks. It caused Scales to bump straight into him, almost knocking him to the ground. Shh, Incap whispered, ducking down. He pushed his hand back, warning Scales to stop and be quiet. Crouching a little further, he turned his head to the side. He was listening for something. Scales looked through the gaps between the carrot tops hanging across their view. It was so still and quiet, you could hear a pin drop. Then, there it was. A scuttling sound. It wasn't loud, but it was there, way off in the distance. A scurrying of what sounded like many dashing feet, one after the other. Pointing his nimble grey finger through the leaves, Incap mouthed. It's coming from over there, leave the body tunnel. Mushrooms are so small and close to the ground. It's easy for them to pick up the teeniest of sounds, especially in the still of the night when every other creature is sleeping, every other creature except. That's when Incap realised and his eyes widened at the thought. The false weasel spiders. Those were the only critters in the allotment who would venture out at this time of night. But what were they doing over by the polytunnel? It was a long way out for them to wander from their hideouts around the water tank. Something must be drawing them over to the other side of the garden. And that's all you're getting of Incap and the blight of the bonnet. Thank you for listening. It has been awesome. You will obviously want to know where to get me books from. I'm going to post some links into this video, but there's links at the top of the group. You can go straight to my Facebook shop. They're on Etsy. I've actually still got some um, exclusive colour copies, which are $11.99 on Etsy. But I'll post all the links in the group. Please, please keep popping back in. I'm going to be hosting this all day, sharing all of the all of the stuff and all of the things, right? And what's really important about today is we're not just um, here to flog books, right? That's not what we're about. Amazing if you can help us and support us because every single order helps every single author. Um, but we're all also here to share something that we've learned about being self-published authors. So this is my tip. Okay, this is what I'm going to be shouting about all the time. It can be very lonely being an author. Um, you get inside your own head and if you don't surround yourself with people who know what you're going through, it can be very, very challenging. So my tip is, and my learn is, I would not be here where I am today without the people around us. Okay, so you've got, I met Alexa Witten, who's going to be coming on. Alexa Witten is my publisher. She helped me get my book out there. But firstly, I met Alexa Tewksbury. Two Alexas, I know. Sorry if you've got Alexas in the house. It's, it's a nightmare. Alexa 1 and Alexa 2, as I call them. So I met Alexa Tewksbury, who takes our words and turns them into magic so that they're great for children to read. She's amazing. So skillful. And then I met more people who've worked with Alexa 1 and Alexa 2. And then people came to me who wanted illust illustra illustrations done and I've never kept anything to myself and I've shared everything that I do so this is this is a, a prime example of the day is about bringing us all together bring the people into your life who you want to be in your life who's going to be total advocates of what you do as an author I think that's so so important so important right everyone 
I'm going to go enjoy the day. Um, get in touch if you want us in your school as well. I'm taking bookings from September because I'm fully booked up until then. Events, anything like that. See you later. Draw!